part 7 of Visual Studio Tips tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the purpose of multiple watch windows in Visual Studio. In part 6, we'll discuss the basics of watch window. So please watch part 6 before proceeding. Let's understand the purpose of multiple watch windows with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I've got a very simple console application. I'll have this code available on my blog in case you need it. First, let's inspect this customer class. So this customer class has got five public properties that is ID, first name, last name, gender and salary. This class also got the static method get all customers and this method is returning list of customer objects as you can see here. So what are we doing within the body of this method? First we are creating a variable of type list of customer objects and then we are creating five different customer objects customer 1 through customer 5 and then we are adding each customer object to that list and finally we are returning the list. So a very simple customer class there. And then within the main method, we are invoking this static method of the customer class, get all customers, which is going to return the list of customer objects. So we are storing that list within this variable, customers, and then we are using a for each loop to loop through that collection of customers and then printing each customer's first and last name. So a very simple program. Now let's place a breakpoint on the for each statement right here and then run this application in debug mode. So the application execution has stopped at that breakpoint. Now if we go to debug windows and then watch, notice that we have got four watch windows, watch one through watch four. Now have you ever wondered the use of these multiple watch windows? These multiple watch windows are extremely useful when we want to compare two object properties during debugging. Let's understand what we mean by this statement with an example. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So we have already invoked the get all customers method. So this variable right here contains, notice the count variable, it says five, meaning this collection contains five customer objects. Okay, now let's say I want to inspect the values of customer 1 object and customer 5 object. Okay, now let's open a watch window. So we go to debug windows and then we select watch watch 1. So that opens up the first watch window. So now look at this. This is the collection which contains five customer objects. So I want to look at the value of the first customer object. First of all, we also have IntelliSense here. So if I press control space, we get the name of the um, variable that we are interested in. Customers of zero. And when I press enter, notice that it displays the customers of zero object. And you know, it's, we are basically able to see the first name, gender, ID, last name and salary. Now I can open another watch window. So go to debug windows and then watch, watch two. So we have another watch window here. Now let's actually undock in a watch one window and place it right here and let's inspect the values of the fifth customer object. So customers of four. So in the fourth location of that collection, we have the fifth customer object. Okay, so notice that again, we are able to view the first name, gender, ID, last name and salary of that fifth customer object. Now look at this, I can place these side by side and inspect their values. So here first name is Valerie, here first name is Mark. So very useful during debugging. Now, you know, some people may say that, okay, instead of using multiple watch windows like this, I can simply put the fifth customer object right here. So here, simply type customers of four and then press enter. So obviously now here we have customer, I mean fifth customer object and here we have the first customer object. But the problem with this is, first of all, you know, this customer object has got only five properties, but in reality, you may have an object with maybe 20, 25 properties. And, uh, you know, if you have both the objects in the same watch window, you know, scrolling up and down makes it really, uh, you know, complex, basically. You know, when you are debugging a complex issue, you know, it's, it's much better if you have the watch window side by side, and if you're looking at the property, um, you know that way it will be much easier rather than having both the objects in the same watch window and then moving up and down. 
since it is only five properties here it's very easy but if we have a complex object with 20 25 properties for example you know it becomes a little difficult to manage that now is it possible to get a copy of the object window from one watch window to another watch window? Yes, and what you can do is simply drag and drop it from one watch window to another watch window. So let's open the other watch window. Again, you have keyboard shortcuts for each of these watch windows. So let's open watch window 2. So here we have watch window 2 and here we have watch window 1. Now let's actually remove this um, customers of four object. Now let's say I want this customers of uh, zero object uh, you know in watch two window. So what I can do is I can simply click on that, hold down the left mouse, drag it and drop it on watch window two. Notice that now I all uh, in watch window two I have this custom I mean first customer object as well. Okay. Now what do you think is going to happen if I change the value in one of the watch windows? Let's change Mark's name to mark M for example and then once I press enter look at that the change is immediately reflected in the other window okay is it possible to replace the current object instance with a new object instance again during your debugging you may want to replace the object that you have already loaded with a new object instance is it possible absolutely but we'll have to make use of immediate window now if you notice, and at the moment, customers of zero, we have, you know, first name as Markham, gender as male, you know, all the other properties. Now, let's say during debugging, I want to, you know, create a new customer object and store it in this location, maybe because I, I'm troubleshooting some issue which requires that. Now, do I have to rerun my application from the scratch again? You don't have to. You can change the object, you know, here while the application is still in debug mode. Uh, but to do that, we need to make use of immediate window. And to get to the immediate window, click on debug, windows, and then there you should have immediate window. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut control DI. So what do we need to do? We want to replace the object that is present in customers of zero location. Okay, so what I'm going to do is look at this customers of zero equals let's get to the immediate window so customers of zero equals new customer now look at what's going to happen the moment I press enter so here basically we are creating a new customer object notice that all the reference type properties are set to null and the value type properties that is integer properties are set to their defaults which is zero and if you look at what happened to the object that is stored within customers of zero location look at that they got their defaults whatever we have specified right here and if you look at the other watch window let's actually look at watch 2 notice uh, what happened in watch window 2 as well the same case here that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day